It's time for another closer look at a key Kentucky Derby contender. And here's your host, Magic. It's fine. It's not too bad. Go ahead. I'll let you go first. Who do you who do you have number five? All right. Number five was actually the toughest spot for me. Um, I'm going to put Zandon in fifth. I think I think he he to me is the, the logical fifth choice right now. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to include Zandon on any of my tickets because I don't know if the price is going to be right. But I think that with Pratt, with tactical speed and the closing kick that we saw at, at uh, Keeneland this weekend, I'll put I'll put Zandon in the fifth spot. Uh, I have him on my board, but he is actually not fifth. I have him higher. I have a horse that we just saw there and probably might still be on yours is Messier. Um, I think that I'm not ready to give up on this horse. I think that uh, I don't love him, but he is a, still a Baffert, right? And he's got John Velasquez. And I saw somebody else uh, mention it earlier, but who else is Baffert going to put on a derby horse right now than Velasquez, right? Mike Smith picks up tie because it's kind of available. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, I, I definitely think Messier still deserves to be discussed in the top five. And if he's not on your top five, I still think he needs to make it. But is he on your top five? Uh, well, you'll find out, man. We're not there <laughs> I, I yet. Was thinking, like, I'm sorry. Is he number four? No, he's not number four. Okay. Number four is White Abario. Um, I, I, I've been high on this horse. I had him as my derby winner going into the Florida Derby. He did nothing to disappoint me except the time came back slower. And I feel like we've seen a couple efforts that are a little bit better than his last time. I still think he's a deserving favorite. I still think he can win the derby. I think any of the top four that I'm going to mention can win the derby right now. They're the only four that I'm currently that interested in pre-draw. We'll see what happens with the draw because... I wasn't on Medina Spirit before that draw, and I sure as heck was afterwards. So we'll see what happens when we actually get to see the draw. But right now, I'm going to put White Abario number four, and he's the first one of the four that I think can win the Derby. I'm going to put Zandon number four. Uh, I think that with Flavian Pratt being aboard and this now being his Derby horse, uh, Aaron did a great job, by the way, at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash racing dudes. You can check out Aaron's latest top five, and he brings up a great point about Flavian Pratt that when he got on a country house, a horse that usually came from way far back, Pratt's a very tactical rider, and he knows where to put a horse. If he has the tactical speed, he can maneuver. We saw, ex right, um, Mike described it expertly in the replay we were watching earlier, how he can weave horses around. So with a good post position, with a good break, Flavian Pratt could have that horse a little closer. And if you're going on the backstretch and you suddenly see Zandon's in like fifth or sixth instead of 16th, you're like, shit, Pratt's on that horse. And that is why he's number four. Yeah, I, I, he, he, Pratt adds a new dimension. And, and the fact that he shuffled that race doesn't mean that that's what he's going to do in the Derby. We've seen him closer to the to the pace in other prep races. So I do think Zan's got a decent shot there. Number three, now you find Messier. I've got Messier sitting at number three on my rankings. Uh, I think this, this horse has a legit shot at winning the Derby. Deserves to be, you know, in that seven, eight to one range most likely. And I think is going to be your pace in the Derby, which makes him all the dangerous. The fact that Forbidden Kingdom is out um, and, and the fact that we have a couple of other, these our classic Causeway is out, who I think were two horses that were likely to set the pace. Now not in the race. I think Messier kind of picks up that mantle. And anytime you have a Yaffert or a Baffert or whatever you want to call this horse on the lead, you, you got to respect it. I don't hate how, uh, where you place him in that spot. I, like I mentioned, I think he's got a shot to make the Derby. Um, back in 2018, uh, there was the whole issue with Justify and should he have been in the San Diego Derby? Should he have won the San Diego Derby, right? Because he had the positive test. And if he shouldn't have been in that, then he should have been in the Kentucky Derby. And if he hadn't been in the Kentucky Derby, Mike, Chad Brown and Jose Ortiz would have a Kentucky Derby win on their mantle. However, they don't. This might be the year they change that. I actually have early voting number three. I, th I actually have that high of an opinion of early voting. After what I saw, this is a son of gun runner. Uh, is he pretty good as a sire right now? Out of yeah, a okay. town mare. So we know <laughs> distance is, is very much what this horse wants to do. Um, loves the dirt. He's very forwardly placed. Uh, or, or oh, Sorry, that's a terrible way to say that. He has a, a very high time form U.S. Uh, pace figure there. Uh, it was 134 uh, going into the Wood Memorial. That was a race that he was coming off of. He hadn't raced since February. I wasn't expecting the best effort from him here. We saw a great progression from his debut at Aqueduct going a mile. 76 buyer to the withers gets an 87 beats unoho horse that ends up winning the rebel stakes um didn't have a good shot in the arkansas derby so we don't know what he could have done there and then almost beats mo donegal despite you know the long layoff now you can conversely argue he had everything his own way and still lost that race that's fair but jose ortiz speed horse chad brown the the breeding to me gun runner of a tis now mayor i don't think people are giving this horse enough credit. And I think I might get a decent price, especially since Zandon won a prep race. I think that horse can take a lot more Chad Brown money. Yeah, you're going to get a good price. Um, I don't think you can win, but you're going to get a good price. I, I think <laughs> I have a problem with him losing that race to Mo Donegal. 
like Mo Donegal is not going to be on my list. I'm not going to be betting Mo Donegal on Derby Day. Um, right now, that's the plan. At least not going. I'm not going to officially right. say that. But right now, Mo Donegal, no thanks. And if I'm no thanks on Mo Donegal, and early voting got everything his own way in the wood. I mean, everything his own way. Got a soft pace. Was able to do it easily. Had no one within two lengths from him turning for home, and was still caught by a horse that I'm not going to use. And I don't think is fast enough to make the lead, which means we're going to have to try and do something else in the Derby. Now, if he draws the two posts in the Derby, then we can change this because then you're going to gun out of the gate and try and make the lead. Whereas if he ends up drawing like the 15 or the 16, he's in a, a world of hurt. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to pass on early voting. I, I thought this was his chance to prove himself in the wood, and I don't think he did it. But I didn't even think about this. Vashon is a great point. If the race is in the slop, early voting, we thought good magic was bred for the slop. Good Lord, gun runner tis now. There's a lot of horses that are bred for the slop that makes the Derby Gate, though. Because you think about, okay, let's talk about who are the best sires in the world. Into Mischief, loves the mud. Gunrunner, loves the mud. Run Happy right now, loves the mud. Like, you have some Giant of Causeway. these. Causeway, yeah. Yeah, Gi Giant's Causeway. Um, I, I, uh, what's the Not other? this there's time, a, son of Giant's Causeway, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a ton of them out there that, that are all just love off tracks. And because of that... I don't think that an off track is necessarily going to hinder a lot of these horses, but I also don't think it means that like, oh, this horse is going to run huge because of it. I, I think that it's much more of an even playing field because of how good all the sires are that we're seeing as the top sires in the world also happen to be good off track sires. Before we get going here, I just want to remind you, Mike, that I do love you and appreciate you as a friend and a podcast co-host. So go ahead. Who do you have? Number two. Number two. Epicenter. I, I can't put him number one right now, and I have to put him at number two. Look, he was very good down in Louisiana. I still don't know how good that Louisiana crop is. And that, like, we haven't had much cross pollination here with the different crops. So it's it's tough to really judge who is good based on who everyone else has faced. So we're kind of a little, little more shaking up the box and kind of dropping out who you like here. Epicenter to me has been the, the most consistent horse, has the correct uh set up where, where we saw him stalk last time out and you're going to probably talk a lot more about epicenter here in a second because i would be shocked if he's not your number one horse um but he it's it's he can make his own trip he doesn't need the lead but he, if he ends up in it he's just fine there too he's got a ton of heart doesn't like getting passed down the lane has a good closing kick i mean he's got all of those boxes that you check from that perspective um you got rosario on board so he quality jockey ashton knows what he's doing like you got everything that you'd want uh i just don't think he's the most talented horse right now and we'll get to that in a second magic who is in your two spot <laughs> um i have in my two spot probably the most raw talented horse in the crop uh is taiba i i don't think you look at that any other way um it's a son of gun runner who cost 1.7 million dollars i stabled the damn horse up back when uh <laughs> so funny uh i'll get to that comment in a second uh i i I stabled this horse up when he was purchased because I went, holy fuck, a gun runner. First crop gun runner went for $1.7 million and that's going to Baffert and it's the guy that owns Medina Spirit and then all the shit that happened afterwards. But personal feelings aside, what this horse did, historic, impressive, cannot uh, knock you for, for loving this horse. Um, my question marks, I guess I should say, uh, for why I have him number two, um, I can go into, I won't, but I could go into about who is he beaten because uh, Messier has beaten Forbidden Kingdom twice. And then lost to slow down Andy, who's looked like trash. Forbidden Kingdom beat a bunch of Baffert horses that have looked like trash since that spot. So I have a lot of question marks about the quality there, but the way he did it does not matter. The way that he like shot past Messi. And by the way, the way that Messi won the Robert B. Lewis, he beat a bunch of trash horses there. It was still really impressive. So um, I have questions about what's going to happen when he gets on the big stage, when he goes you know, a mile and a quarter. But there, there are question marks about things that are just – all he has to do is prove it. It's not something I can point to and go, see, that's a problem right there. That's, the problem is on the, is on the paper, and that is really just worthless. Yeah, and that's, that's why he's my number one horse. I, like, I, I don't see – to me, there's no way you could not – like the only horse you could possibly argue to me would be ranked ahead of him as Epicenter. I don't think it fits because, look, Messi is a top three horse in this crop, and he just dusted him. First time going two turns, first time going long. We've seen all these other horses progress and get better and better. We don't know how good Taiba is yet. That, to me, is yeah. like one of the scariest parts about this is that, look, we're, Epicenter's run three off the layoff. We've kind of seen that progression, right? We've seen horses like uh, Modonigal go through that progression, like Zandon go through that progression. We haven't seen Taiba get to that progression point yet. You're about to see what lo logically is going to be his best race of his three-year-old career, his third off the layoff, third start. 
This is supposed to be how you prep horses, according to Baffert, according to Brown, according to uh, Pletcher. Like, this is what you do is you go A, B, C, and C is the derby, C is the best race, C is when you're fully cranked. If that wasn't fully cranked, if that was scraping the bottom of the barrel, we, like, everyone's in trouble. Tyba could dominate this race. And I think that the, the other problem is if you go back and you watch the San Diego Derby, Tyba breaks really well and then sits. Taiba has tactical speed. Taiba can break. Taiba was on the lead sprinting in a 45 second half. So it's not, it, it, but now we know Taiba can also rate. And that was my biggest question going into the San Diego Derby. It was yours biggest for Epicenter going into the Louisiana Derby was can we actually rate? And the answer is yes on Taiba. And that makes that horse even scarier to me. So uh, right now, Taiba is my pick. And, and the thing with Taiba is like, as long as Taiba doesn't draw like the one, the horse is pretty dangerous from any post. It's one or what's the other 17 is the one. No horse has ever won the Kentucky Derby from post 17, I think is what that one is. Um, so it's kind of like the, like the other bad luck spot. Yeah. There's I, what I love is that right now, the, like the number one battle for, for you and I, for everyone at racing dudes.com for a lot of people who know what the hell they're talking about. It's the connections of gun runner, Winchell thoroughbred, Steve Asmussen, Versus a son of Gunrunner. If you're a, a if you own Gunrunner, like if this if you're worthy, I forget where you're standing right now, but if you're the Stallion Farm, I'll let us know. We'd love to have a sponsor. Uh, but if you're that Stallion Farm, you're like, I don't care. We're gonna win. That this is amazing. I absolutely yeah. love what's what's happening with uh, with the Kentucky Derby right now. It's a good look. Uh, Gunrunner is having a heck of a, a heck of a season. I mean, he's he's been absolutely awesome from a sire perspective. Good first out, good early precociousness in these horses. You're seeing him win early, and then you're seeing him win at distance. You're seeing him win sprints. I mean, Gunrunner's been been very impressive, and even done well in the turf, which I thought was kind of random. That you've seen a lot of Gunrunners try turf second and third time out and have success. I'm loving all the Star Wars talking here. Epicenter <laughs> is Luke Skywalker, the only hope against the evil Baffert Empire. And then JL responds, no, there is another. Uh, I would love to. <laughs> JL, tell us who you think is the other one. I, this is uh, this is killing it. Um, and then Alex brought up, would Magic be able to stand up on a show if Pratt was on Epicenter? Listen, it's all I can do to sit up when it's Joel Rosario riding Epicenter. Uh, the, the answer is no. No, if, if, if Pratt has to ride Epicenter, we're not doing a live show at least not one that I'm on. <laughs> Magic would lose it. <laughs> I'd, lose it. I, I'd be a nervous. I'd be I'd be slim at the right before the Breeders' Cup Classic, chain smoking on the roof of my apartment building, just going crazy. Yeah. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels. Never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.